And uh, we are very pleased to have Norma Trees from Yachty Global joining us at the moment. Um, I know that your time is very limited and very short. You were in the middle of massive preparations uh, to help with the Hurricane Dorian relief uh, that is going on at the moment. What is it like? You're in Florida, correct? Uh, yes, I am. I'm here in Fort Lauderdale. And, um, you know, fortunately, we have escaped um, the worst of the hurricane effects. Uh, personally, um, my husband and I have uh, our properties already secured several days ago, and we didn't even need that. Um, however, um, as I just told you, um, while we've been talking, I've had uh, two coconuts fall down um, from a very large tree that we have in our backyard. And uh, the last thing you want is something like that hitting you in the head. So even being outside the cone, um, we are seeing of the effects of a wind and rain here, but that's nothing compared to what's happening in the Bahamas and um, what is likely to hit the, the mainland U.S. Um, a little bit further north of us in Florida um, late tonight. Well, you kind of dodged a bullet there because they were they were saying that Fort Lauderdale was sort of in the eye at one stage, weren't they? Um, yeah, a couple of days ago, we thought that we were going to get a direct hit. And, um, and that's why not just ourselves, but uh, most of our neighbors um, responded really quickly. And that's a good thing to see because it's easy to become complacent and say, oh, you know, we've always dodged a bullet. It's never hit us here. Um, but you never know. Um, as easily as yesterday, it could have made a, just a very slight turn, a couple of degrees and come ashore here. Um, but it didn't. And you're right. We did dodge a bullet, but um, it's always best to be prepared. And, um, you know, a lot of people, well, as I said, you know, tend to forget that and not take it that seriously. Um, but um, but people have responded very, very uh, well to this. And um, it's good to see that um, emergency services are up and running. I, I saw FPNL trucks out on the road um, today um, going around and, and looking for uh, dangerous branches and so on. And of course, taking down power lines it is one of the worst effects. But again, nothing compared to what's going on um, in the Bahamas and uh, what can happen. Uh, further north here in the United States. So um, we feel very fortunate. Now, what is Yachty do, uh, Global doing at the moment? I mean, you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, are getting very prepared at the moment, are you not? Um, Yachty Global, just let me give you a little background. Um, we have been operating for 14 years, um, providing um, both uh, disaster relief as well as ongoing humanitarian humanitarian aid, um, not just for disasters, but also for um, areas in chronic need. Um, uh, and um, you can take a look at that at our uh, website at yadeglobal.org. Um, we have a lot of ongoing um, missions, um, Operation Beagle in the Galata Swimway in um, Baja, and uh, we're adding more, um, you know, long-term operations as we go. Uh, regarding uh, Hurricane Dorian, we started about a week ago with specific actions. Um, we're calling it uh, Operation Topaz, and um, we already have a lot of uh, resources um, ready to deploy. We have a yacht named Loon, which is uh, uh, Christensen, which is uh, currently in Nassau, and um, she has been uh, fully briefed and is aware of what uh, required and as soon as um, she's allowed to leave port, uh, she'll be um, making um, uh, making headway towards um, the Abacos, which is um, in the northern Bahamas and the area most uh, seriously impacted. Uh, we have a rapid response team um, that is leaving Miami shortly. Uh, they've already tried uh, yesterday to make landfall in the Bahamas. And as you know, um, the airports uh, were completely flooded. And so we expect to be able to get them on island um, as of late today or tomorrow. And they will be in a position to um, directly assess what the needs are, um, both the immediate needs, um, and that would be uh, life-saving medical uh, requirements, um, evacuation if, um, if necessary and possible. Um, so, um, uh, so we'll be able to uh, assess that, and then uh, we'll be able to deploy um, the many, many yachts um, we have that have volunteered. Uh, we're extremely careful about our resources and making sure that um, appropriately, um, you know, we have a, a, a pipeline um, that, um, that we have developed and worked with for a long time. Um, our um, disaster aid um, uh, relief work uh, has been most prevalent uh, in the past uh, in Vanuatu and then in the Caribbean. 
And um, I'd like to think that we have been uh, very successful and helpful in what we've done. Uh, but what's really important at this point for us is to make sure that um, we are responding appropriately and using the resources that we have in the best way possible. Um, and, um, uh, you know, with, without uh, alienating any of our supporters, um, making sure that, uh, you know, we're not taking on more than we can handle or um, is appropriate for the type of aid that uh, we can provide. Well, the one thing um, I think very interestingly... <clears throat> Sorry, one thing that everybody learned, Sorry. I think, uh, in the wake of Irma and Maria was that, you know, everybody has their heart in the right place, of course. You know, we all want to help. We all, all want to do what we can. But donating all of your old clothes, a pair of flip flops isn't going to help. You know, uh, there is a necessity for certain things. And, and that that's why it's really important to go to an organization such as yours that has their feet on the ground, that knows exactly what's needed, whether it be nails, whether it be hammers, whether it be winter coats or, or whatever, um, but to make sure that the aid that is going is aid that is necessary. Exactly. Well, winter coats is, is hot, hardly likely to be the need uh, immediately, and that's for sure. Um, no, definitely, um, you're absolutely right, um, Rhea. What's um, needed um, the most uh, generally is the first need is um, evacuation, medical attention, and water. And right. um, we have um, a vessel, uh, a medical ship called Pacific Hope um, that is leaving either today or tomorrow from um, the um, Dominican Republic that will be on site as of this weekend. Um, they can produce something like a 20,000 gallons of water per day. Um, they have thousands of pounds of, um, of food on board that they're going to be able to feed the population. And um, they can take um, three to 400 um, evacuees aboard. Um, so we think that that's going to be a great resource. And we are currently um, working with a number of um, groups and companies that uh, want to donate um, things like medical personnel and supplies. But frankly, that is, again, something that has to be handled uh, absolutely correctly. Um, we definitely um, uh, do not want to uh, use that any of the resources on island, uh, nor do we want to be a hindrance. And while a lot of people want to volunteer, you know, it's very romantic and, and courageous of people to want to go to the island and save lives. Uh, the reality is if they're not trained for that, they can um, they can do a lot more damage. So, um, we, you know, we're really thankful to the yacht community that has um, already responded uh, very well. We have set up a special donation line um, that's available at uh, yachtaidglobal.org. Um, um, for Hurricane Dorian um, and assistance in the Northern Bahamas. Um, and, um, you know, what's happened there, they're, they're talking about uh, 13,000 homes that have been destroyed. Um, you know, there's something like uh, 25,000 people um, that live on the islands that are affected. Um, so um, in an ideal world, we'll be able to respond and be very, very effective. Um, but this is this is not something for a knee jerk reaction, um, you know. And um, and and Yare Global, we have a very specific focus. Um, we want to make sure that that we so uh, that's where we are today. Well, and what would you say to those people? I mean, I, I've seen a lot on social media straight across the board. I mean, everybody, like I said, has their heart in the right place. But a lot of boats are saying and yachts themselves, oh, we're going to head on over there. But I mean, you don't know what's in the water. You don't know how to get there safely. You don't know if it, there is even safe harbor at the moment. So it's not wise to be jumping on board your, your boat or your yacht and heading over with whatever you can you know, throw onto the boat because you might end up needing emergency rescue yourself, which takes away from those that really need. That's exactly right. Um, and, um, and, and you've made my point for me. And that, the reality is that... Um, you know, of course, uh, we understand that everybody wants to help. And, um, you know, what, what we're getting a lot of requests for right now is um, donations of materials. Until we know exactly what it is we need and how we can get it there, um, we're, we're, we're not looking for that at, at this point. Um, um, you know, for us at this point, uh, you know, whether what we're going to need to be supplying is... Um, you know, construction materials uh, in the long term, um, whether we're going to actually be able to uh, get approval from the Bahamian government. And that's a big point about yachts that want to head over there on their own. Um, they do have to have um, specific approval from the Bahamian government. Um, and, and that's a process. And uh, we're working on that right now. Um, you need to have not only a memorandum 
memorandum of understanding and MOU um, that authorizes you, um, but that but that needs to be um, vetted, and you need to have the documentation from uh, the Bahamian government. Um, otherwise, you will be turned back and uh, cause more of a problem um, than you can help with. Um, so you know, I, I'm not trying to um, to sound like Debbie Downer, and uh, neither are we. Um, you know, waiting. Um, in our response, um, we just want to make sure that we understand exactly what is needed and um, deploy the resources that we have in the most efficient, uh, best way possible. Um, understanding that there's going to be a lot of people that um, that want to do what they can. Um, as far as um, donations of materials go, um, uh, we're working with um, a Global Empowerment out of Miami. And um, they are putting together supplies and we will be um, getting supplies from them. I do know that a number of yachting organizations, um, wonderful groups like uh, National Marine, for instance, um, has a number of vessels and a lot of materials already on hand. So th they are certainly resources and we will be working with them as well. But, you know, we like to make sure that um, that we can handle what we have on our plate and that we render the best assistance possible as efficiently as possible. And as soon as we have more information, uh, we'll be posting it on um, our Facebook page. Seems we have lost a little bit of connection there with Norma in Florida. I'm not sure if that's going to come back up or not. But uh, I think the point being is that um, the best bet is to sit back and wait uh, until everything is, is clear on what's going on. And um, actually, she's just messaged me and she said that they've lost power. So, of course, that's it's expected. Um, and... Like I said, like she was saying, the best bet is to uh, donate money. Um, you can go to the Audit Global. They're doing a fundraiser. Um, when you donate the money to them, what they can do, what it enables them to do is then go and purchase, purchase products in bulk. Uh, it makes it easier to ship. It makes it easier to take. Uh, so I would definitely recommend doing that if your heart's in that place. And as she did mention, don't be jumping on a boat or a yacht and heading over there because more than likely you're going to be turned back. You won't be allowed into harbor. Um, and, and you might actually create more of a problem than uh, they actually need at the moment and take away from the rescue efforts of those that are on the ground. So thank you very much. And uh, I thank Norma for taking the time. And I hope she does get power uh, quickly um, because they are very, very busy making sure that uh, Hurricane Dorian is, um, well, the, the disaster relief is, is taken care of. So uh, this has been Ria Live for Yachting International Radio. And uh, do please head on over to Yachty Global and donate what you can. Ah, wait, she is back. Just a minute. So now I'm on my um, iPhone, uh, which is able to connect to the, the ether. So <laughs> no worries. I was, I was going to carry on without you, but uh, now you're <laughs> no, back. I'm glad. I was just saying that the best bet is to donate money because that enables, um, not only the purchase of products that are actually in need in bulk so that, you know, it becomes cheaper um, and you know specifically what is needed then when there is cash available. Absolutely. Um, uh, you understand uh, fully what the situation is and um, I really appreciate it. Um, we do have a page up at uh, yadeglobal.org um, and uh, we are accepting uh, donations currently. And um, as I said, we've got our resources um, in place and um, we are um, ready to make, um, uh, you know, a, a direct um, type of assistance to the islands as soon as our rapid response team um, is on island, on location, and can give us a report of exactly what is needed. And um, we will have regular updates on our um, Facebook, um, uh, Instagram, and on our website um, of the exact situation as soon as we know better. Wonderful. Well, I've provided a link on the interview itself. Um, and as well, I will make sure that on well, and I've been sharing all of your posts throughout for the last uh, three days. So I will continue to do that. Um, we are here for you, whatever you may need. If you need to reach out and ask for anything specifically, please do feel free to contact us and we will go live again and, and make whatever please that you need for whatever you need. Um, and we wish you all the best of luck. 
uh, in, in the next few days or the next week. I mean, I know this process isn't going to be over overnight. This is going to be a long process. I mean, we saw that already with Hurricane Maria and, and Irma. It, it's, you know, it's still ongoing. Exactly. Um, so I'm sure it's going to exactly. continue for well, a that, few years. That, that is the point. Um, you know, there's a, what they say is, you know, three pillars of um, emergency response. And, um, you know, we're, we're in the first, which is um, emergency. And uh, then we have... Um, you know, uh, ongoing and then rebuilding is the longest term. And so, you know, and that's one place in which the yacht community has been extremely responsive and um, extremely supportive. And that's probably the, the place where we can um, have the greatest effect. And as we know, the, the Bahamas are beloved um, in the yacht community, um, you know, certainly uh, myself and in my own yachting career and it being right in my backyard, so to speak, um, you know, love the Bahamas, the Abacos in particular. And um, so, um, you know, we, we really look forward to doing the best that we can. And um, thank you very much for your support. We certainly do appreciate it and keep an eye out for the updates. And um, I just got a, an urgent call coming in on the other line. So I'm going to have to I love you. and No worries. Thank, thank you, thank so, you much. so much, Norma. Take care and good luck to all of you. You too. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. We wish Norma and the team at Yachting Global the best. And uh, as I said, we'll continue to update you right here on Yachting International Radio. And uh, if they do have any urgent updates or any urgent requests, we will make sure to bring you that information right here on Yachting International Radio. Thank you for tuning in. This is Rhea.